Hey guys, it's Darwin here with a full review of the UGQ Bandit Down Quilt. You guys know that I'm a pretty big down quilt fan. I got away from traditional sleeping bags and mummy bags some time ago and I am a total quilt person now. I really like the versatility of a quilt a lot better than your traditional sleeping bag. You should also know that I am a huge enlightened equipment geek. I have a lot of their stuff, but I was kind of looking at reaching out and maybe trying some different quilts that are on the market. So UGQ, also known as Underground Quilts, contacted me a few months ago and wanted to know if I would be interested in checking out one of their top selling quilts, which is called The Bandit. So I realized in my quilt arsenal that I didn't have a 10 degree yet, so I took them up on their offer and I ordered a 10 degree bandit down quilt. Now I used that quilt exclusively for the first time on my rim to rim to rim hike of the Grand Canyon with Nemour and it did pretty good in the field. I haven't used it as much as I thought that I would, but I thought I would give you my thoughts on the bandit quilt. So before I tell you what I like and what I don't like about the quilt, let's go ahead and go over the specs. So UGQ makes a lot of different quilts, but one of their top sellers is the bandit. Now you can get the bandit in a bunch of different formats, like a closed foot box or an open foot box. You can get a taper, no taper, different colors, different fills, different temperature ratings. But the one that I decided to go with is an 850 fill, 10 degree quilt. It's 55 inches in width and 78 inches in length. My Bandit features the snap and draw cord foot box, so I can completely open it up and sprawl it out like a blanket, or I can snap it together and draw the bottom to make it more of a traditional foot box. The inner material is made out of an M10 sill nylon, and the outer is made of an HD 1.0. Now the one that I ordered has the traditional full taper on it, so it's a little bit wider on the top, and then it tapers down to a little bit smaller of a width at the toe box. It has a double drawstring at the top that you can snap around your head and then draw it close to you, kind of like a mummy bag to help trap that heat in. And then it has three loops down the back of the quilt that does utilize pad straps to keep the quilt nice and tucked down on the pad so there are no drafts. Now, like I said, you guys know that I'm a huge Enlightened Equipment fan and the quilt that I typically use from Enlightened Equipment is the Revelation. So the Bandit is very similar to the Revelation as far as build, as far as being able to have that closed foot box or being able to open it up. And then all the different features with the different colors, the different fills and the different temperatures. Now the Revelation that I have is a 20 degree bag. So it's sort of hard to compare this 10 degree to my Revelation 20, but just to do a little bit of comparing the UGQ Bandit in a 10 degree with an 850 fill comes in at 24 ounces. And then the Enlightened Equipment at the exact same specs comes in at 24.79. So the UGQ is actually just a little bit lighter on my scale than the Revelation at the exact same build. Now one big thing that I did notice about the Bandit compared to my Revelation is the Bandit doesn't give you as many options as far as width and length. Their stops a little bit shorter where the Enlightened Equipment quilts tend to go a little bit longer and a little bit wider if you're needing that extra room with a quilt. Now again, comparing the two quilts at the build that I got, the Bandit retails for $244 and an Enlightened Equipment Revelation at the same build comes in at $310. So what are some of the features that I like about the Bandit quilt? Well, overall, the Bandit is a very well-made quilt. Really nice quality, good construction, really nice stitching. There was never, you know, a missed stitch or anywhere that I can see where they kind of rush the job, so very nicely built. I like the overall design of their quilt. They have a different baffle system than what I'm used to. So it has a vertical baffle system going down to the foot box. And then once you get to the foot box, it has a horizontal baffle. So that makes sure that all that down stays in the foot box where you want it. Now, obviously I like that the retail is a little bit cheaper than Enlightened Equipment and they do include a stuff sack with your order. And then a few things that I'm not a big fan of with the Bandit um, are number one, I don't really like the snaps on the foot box. I've gotten really used to there being a big main zipper on my Enlightened Equipment quilt. And whenever I'm sleeping at night, 
I can feel these snaps. They tend to kind of dig into the back of my leg a little bit, and I wasn't a big fan of that where the zipper on my enlightened equipment doesn't bother me at all. The other thing that I'm not a big fan of on the Bandit quilt are their little pad strap attachments. So on the enlightened equipment, it has a little snap thing, which I think is also the same on the Z-Pax quilt and on some of the other quilts on the market. Uh, UGQ decided to go with this little dongle system. So it has the loop here and then it has your cord and your whole pad strap that has a dongle and it just kind of goes in there and attaches that way. I'm not a big fan of that, especially because the end of these dongles are a little bit pointy. Um, it didn't happen, but you know, over time I could see that kind of wearing into my pad because I do use an inflatable pad. So I'm not a big fan of that system. And then overall the fact that they put three different loops all the way down the quilt, but they only included one pad strap with the quilt. When I ordered my Enlightened Equipment quilt, um, it does come with all the pad straps that you need so you can keep the draft away from your foot box and from your upper, where with the UGQ, they did only include one strap. Now that could have been a mistake by the company for getting to put an extra one in, but that is one thing that I didn't really like. And then the last thing that I didn't like about the Bandit quilt is its overall width. Now, even though it does state its width, um, I feel like it is a lot more narrow than my enlightened quilts. The reason is, is whenever I'm sleeping at night with this quilt, the one thing that I have noticed is I personally toss and turn a lot when I'm sleeping at night. And if I toss over onto my side and I start sleeping on my side, the sides of the quilt, even if I'm using the pad straps, will come up a little bit and I'll get draft where it seems like the enlightened equipment quilts are just a little wider by, by nature. So I don't get those drafty nights with my enlightened quilts. But those are just a few of the complaints that I have with it. Aside from that, I think it's a very well-built product. Like I said, the stitching is phenomenal. Uh, the down is very nice and fluffy in there. And then, you know, if you are one of those budget shoppers and maybe you're not so wide, so you don't need so much width, uh, maybe the whole dongle thing doesn't really bother you with the pad strap. Uh, I think it's a really good budget quilt that's a little bit cheaper than the Enlightened Revelation. Originally, my plan was to take this on my through hike of the Penhody Trail because it's in February and it's going to be a little bit chillier, but I'm actually not going to take it. I'm going to be taking my Revelation instead just for the fact that I'm having those draft issues with the sides coming up, it letting cold air in, and I don't wanna have that when I'm out on the Penhody, so I am gonna be taking my 20 degree revelation. Now I do plan on getting the Bandit quilt out more in the field to do more testing, and Snuggles has actually taken it out herself, and she is also testing it to see if we're gonna be keeping it in our fleet. If you haven't had a chance yet, go over and check me out on Instagram. I've been posting a lot of new photos lately of some of the things that Snuggles and I have going on throughout the week, plus some pictures from some past hikes. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and as always guys, thanks for watching.